As London locks down, the doors of Dr Scott Miller's practices stay open. Here's your baby. Caring for the animals that stand by our side. I don't think we can underappreciate just how important animals have been to their owners during lockdown. How the hell do you swallow that? Because we've all been isolated. Hello, boy. And the fact that they give us that unconditional love and that security has been so invaluable to so many people. Oh my God. Luna, what's happened? I have to say I'm a little bit concerned. Can't find any more problems in this dog. In this time of suffering... It's not great news, I'm afraid, Carol. Our pets have never been more important. She is the child that I've never had. And if we'd left it, I might not have him. This is Lockdown Vet. Hi there, Karen. How are you? Hello, Scott. I'm very well. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Lily. Hi, gorgeous. Say hello Hi, to Scott. Scott. Hello, hello, baby. She doesn't like Zoom. How, how are you feeling with regards to Lily and uh, the big day tomorrow? A bit nervous. Obviously, we did the ultrasound the other day and uh, it looks a little bit worrying. It does. Yep. look like potentially some sort of cancer in her bladder. That's right, yes. You really couldn't script the level of connection that Karen and Lily have, and it's not just on an emotional level, but a physical one as well. Lily, I removed a, a tumour from her mammary tissue a couple of years ago, and almost at exactly the same time, uh, poor Karen was diagnosed with breast cancer and needed to undergo treatment as well. Ooh, there. And now, unfortunately, again, Lily is showing symptoms which make me worry that the big C is really back. Hi there, Karen. Hello, Frank. Hello, Rachel. <laughs> I can get close to you, but I can't get close to you. I'm That's sorry right. about that. How's she doing? She is doing very well. A bit apprehensive, a bit nervous, as yes. always. Yes, she's always very sweet in saying she hi to me. Is. So today Lily will have an operation to check out a growth on her bladder to see whether it's benign or malignant and whether it can be removed. I'm starting to get apprehensive and a bit frightened to be honest. All right honey, you're not going home, you're coming with me. Say bye to mommy. Come on, you're going this way. Come, Come on then. I think you'd have to be dead inside to not feel for the situation that Karen finds herself in. She's diagnosed for a second time with breast cancer in a global pandemic. Alongside that, she's now got a dog who potentially has a life-limiting illness. You wouldn't wish this on your worst enemy, you really wouldn't. Come on Hi guys. Oh. Ah, Nina and Sam, this is Lily, I think you both know her. Come here, gorgeous. Oh. Hi, Lily. So, hi. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a nervous day, not only for her, but for her mum, as you know, Karen's going through her own cancer battles at the moment, and now we think there's a big chance that Lily has also got a bladder tumour. So, we're going to ultrasound the bladder again, just to see how the mass is looking. Uh, X-ray to see if there's any spread of any cancer and hopefully if there isn't then we're going to go in and we're going to see if we can remove that pesky tumour aren't we? Yeah. Yes. She's so beautiful isn't she? Don't you think? I love a little tongue. I love a little tongue, yeah. A little tongue. Um, just come in then. Yeah. Um, I think I just noticed that. So what we found, unfortunately, is a second mass. The first mass that we knew about is in the bladder. This is a mass on the outside of her body, on her mammary tissue, her breast tissue. And it's right near the spot two years ago where I removed her previous breast tumour. So that's quite concerning for me. So what we're going to do now is perform a finely last spread of this new lump. Basically, we're going to take a sample of the cells and then we're going to have a look under the microscope and just see if there's any suspect cells there, which may mean that this is a concerning kind of one. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Look how red it's going. OK, 
Okay, x-ray. Uh, things keep getting from bad to worse with Lily. Uh, we've just done x-rays and although her chest is clearer of any obvious tumours, as I was turning her, um, I also found another lump on her back. So, Nina's busily looking under a microscope to see if there's any cancer cells in those two. So how did that new lump look, Nina? Um, that one looked quite fatty. Awesome. Um, but the rest is just having a look. Fantastic. Okay, great. Well, so at the moment, I just have to remove the one. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. I can't find any more problems in this dog. All right, I'm going to leave you guys to prep and then I'll get ready for surgery and we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. As a vet, you always shoulder responsibility, life or death, and it's a heavy burden to carry sometimes. In the case of Karen and Lily, I feel even more responsibility to make sure that my patient pulls through because with Karen going through her battle, I want to try and take as much of the weight from her as I can. And if I can provide her with a healthy dog at the end of this process, then that's exactly what I'll do. So right now I'm just about to open up Lily's abdomen. So what I've got here is Lily's bladder in my hand. Just having a feel now just to see if I can feel any mass. On the outside of the bladder it actually doesn't look too bad. There's quite a lot of fat around the, the bladder which could distort the way it looks on an ultrasound. We've got to go in and have a little feel and a little look around the bladder so that's exactly what uh, Nina and I will be doing right now. Thankfully after a series of unfortunate finds, um, this is not bad because I'm thinking that this looks free of tumours. So what we could see on the ultrasound, I don't know. So quite a lot of fat around the, the bladder which could distort the way it looks on an ultrasound because we, I doubt we would have even picked that up on an ultrasound, it's too small. What Nina and I have found is a tiny, tiny little lump uh, right at the, um, the bladder neck. Certainly it would be impossible to remove, but it would be quite difficult to sample as well. So, a little different from what we thought, but at the same time it's actually tentatively positive. <laughs> so, we'll see. Now that I've taken samples from Lily's bladder, but also from her mammary tissue, it's now the anxious wait where we send those samples off to the lab and see what the pathologist had to say. All right, let's wake her up. Is my cup half full or half empty? It's probably in the middle, I think. It is going to be a very nervous wait because this impacts not only on the health of my patient. Hey, you did so good. Well done. But also her loving mum, Karen, as well. Come on then. Good girl, let's go. There we go. Loki is grey, Loki is tiny, and Loki is incredibly cute. This little kitten is absolutely what you want when you start a day at a vet practice. How's your tail doing? Doing that good, is it? I'm gonna have to sort that. He's our favorite boy. He's just the uh, tiniest baby in our litter, and we've been quite worried about the tail. Let's go and sort this little tail out, shall we? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Is that a yes? Hi, Jem. Look, I've got little Loki. Oh, and he's so cute. <laughs> he's unbelievable, isn't he? He's like a, like a sort of a, a meowing pom-pom. Yeah. <laughs> so, quite a difficult one. You can see the problem right oh, there. So, from birth, he's had this issue with his tail. So, he's one of five. He's the only boy. Um, all of his sisters are perfectly formed, but he was born with this tail which it looks like it was just kind of, uh, the blood supply was cut off. Um, and now this is quite hard. 
right at the end there's a little bit of dead tissue and unfortunately there's a real risk with Loki that if I leave the tail tip intact it could actually lead to gangrene, sepsis and death. So absolutely we do need to remove this little tail tip from this gorgeous little kid. So what I was thinking that we'd do is because we want to try and do it pretty quickly yeah. but obviously pain free. So if we give him some pain relief as an injection and then what we'll do is we'll just gas him down enough that then we can do what we need to do and then wake him up very quickly. Okay. Yeah, because it's going to be very difficult to get an IV into such tiny little legs. Yeah. <laughs> Shame we have to do it for someone so young but it is the right thing to do. It is quite difficult when you're treating an animal so small and so young because they are fragile. With a procedure like this we don't take it lightly. But at the same time, unfortunately, it just needs to be done because if you don't do something, then you'll be kicking yourself if then it gets a severe infection. All right then. All right, so we've got a nice warm bed there for him. That's good. Yeah. Already snoozing. <laughs> Cats are quite responsive to being gassed down anyway, um, but being a baby, if he can breathe in the anaesthetic, then he can also breathe it out. So if we have any issues, we just stop providing him with the anaesthetic and he should wake up quite quickly. Jason, can you just open me a scalpel blade, please? Can we just get the light in position if you're able to reach it? He's up at five, is he? Okay, you got hold of him there. Guinness Book of Records, I could have got there, Gem. The world's fastest surgery ever. Yeah. Uh, I have a certificate coming in the mail at any moment. Okay, right, that's it. So let's wake him up. Yeah. Yep. Take him out. It is always a little bit scarier when we're treating infants, just because they're so delicate and they're so small uh, and they're just at the start of their life. Okay, little one. Meow, please, would be nice. And before I know it, the cuteness is back. Little Loki has woken up and straight away, he's quite hungry. Good boy. Wee. Looking for a food and looking for his mummy, so. Here we go. Yeah, good boy. How could you not love Loki? He is so cute, but one person that loves him even more is Slatina, his owner. She's only had him for a few short weeks, but you can tell she absolutely adores this little ball of fluff. Hi. Hiya. Here's your little man, yeah. little soldier. Oh. Come, Wookie. Come, Mommy. Come, Mommy. Come, Mommy. You did very well, and you can see now he no longer has that dead oh, bit of tail. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's nice and okay. neat. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. one little stitch. That's all we needed. Yeah, he's got a lovely little nature. He's very feisty. Yeah. yeah. And then in a year from now, you just will never know that Loki had been through a major surgery in his infancy. His tail will only be just imperceptibly shorter, and I doubt anyone's going to measure it. I think it'll be just fine. Okay, bye, mate. Say bye. Bye, gorgeous bye, boy. Bye, doctor. Bye, gorgeous boy. Say thank you. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 I'm just about to call Karen because I've got some big news for her. She's been checking in about the pathology results for Lily pretty much every day since the surgery was done, but it's taken a really agonizingly long time. Normally it's maybe five days. Today is day 10 and they've just arrived. Hi there, Karen. How are you? Hi, good. I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Is Lily with you? 
She is indeed. She's the ears are are standing up to attention. So it's been an agonizing wait. It's been That's ten right. long days. Yes. But the news is really good. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't have cancer in either position. You are joking. How amazing uh, is that? Yeah. Oh, excellent news. Oh, yeah. excellent news. Yeah. yeah, I've got hairs on the back of my neck telling you that, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, standing up. Yeah, it's it's so lovely to <laughs> have this moment with you. And you know, um, I think my, my treatment is now completed as well, and there is no sign of anything there. Really? Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're free of cancer as well? Um, yes, so double, double good news. It's hard to truly quantify how it is that these two souls are intertwined, but it is quite incredible. The fact that they've both been through a cancer diagnosis at the same time, and the support that they give each other is, is quite a magical relationship. Wow, well done. Good girl. You know, it's so important to have a reason to get out of bed when, when life deals you a few curveballs. And she's that reason. So Lily is my companion, um, my confidant, if I dare say that. She's the child that I've never had. You little schlucky. You little schlucky. <laughs> You couldn't ask for more. We're extremely grateful. And we look forward to, to the rest of our time together. Hi, Alan, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much indeed. I hear you've got a job for me. In London, Scott's taking a call from his good friend Alan from the organisation British Divers Marine Life Rescue. We've got a seal in Teddington Lock and um, it has a horrible great big hook in its top lip with a big fishing lure on it and uh, it's not able to eat very well so we're worried that he's going to lose weight. So what we're going to do is try and uh, get him out of there, hopefully tomorrow. And if wow. you come down and actually try and get the hook out, that would really help us. I've known Alan for many years now and he really is an amazing guy. He set up the incredible British Divers Marine Life Rescue many years ago to help with injured sea life. Uh, and he has called me out all over the place. He's called me out in Cornwall and also to Norfolk. But this time round, it's just around the corner, only about a mile away from the practices. This rescue is in the River Thames. Can you see that? Oh, I see. And there's the lure right there. Wow. I think it's in the top lip, so. I really hope so. I've seen this in, in dogs, and as, as we both know, they're kind of like the dogs of the ocean um, in their anatomy. And what I'm thinking with that is seeing it is, is we almost need to try and chock something in between its molars to keep its mouth open for me to be able to lift that uh, front um, muzzle back. And hopefully it is gonna be just in the lip, because if it's in the hard palate, that's going to be a little bit more challenging. That's going to be difficult. Next day, a dozen volunteers are gathering at Teddington Lock on the River Thames, where the seal has been corralled. It's pretty heartbreaking to see this seal in the lock. It's only been in the area about a week, and literally on its first or second day here, it's got this hook stuck in its mouth, which, if left, will probably cause its end. It will struggle to be able to eat. Eventually that will lead to starvation and death. So it's incredibly important that we remove this fish hook. Oh, hello. I can't wait to get that out of your mouth. Hey? I'm feeling a lot of mixed emotions right now. Obviously very excited as a vet to get my hands on my patient and just to see what kind of damage those hooks have done to this beautiful seal's mouth. But at the same time, I am quite nervous about the seal's mouth because they can lash out when they're nervous, they can bite really hard, they've got a lot of nasty bacteria in their mouth and those infections can lead to a worst case scenario of an amputation of a limb. But before Scott can extract the fish hook, the seal must first be captured. So should we get the net out so we can, yeah. we can line it up a bit? No easy task in a lock that's 30 metres long. The plan is to sink a massive net into the lock and encourage the seal to swim towards it. So that's going to go down one. That's going to go down one side. Yeah. Adding to the complexity of the operation, 
London is battling a severe COVID-19 outbreak, so the rescuers must remain vigilant around the virus as well. Oh, no. So phase one is getting the net in the water, which uh, we've managed to achieve, but our prey is elusive, uh, is just swimming around over there, uh, having a lovely time, but staying very much away from the net. So phase two is getting the boats in the water and trying to encourage uh, the seal to go over the net. This is a terrifying moment for the seal. It doesn't know that we're trying to help it, and it really is fighting for its life. Okay, lift it up. Yep. There's been occasions where the rescuers have tried to rescue animals like this, and they've died because of stress. Today, I really do need to be prepared for anything. All right, coming up. That's it, it's all right. Yeah, well actually I think that it's already pulled out. That's it. Let's have a look. Has anyone got a towel? Okay, baby. Yeah, I know you're grumpy. Good girl. Just get that over to eyes. That's it. Fine. Yeah, same again. Yeah, that's perfect. Well done. Thank you. I think unbelievably the net has actually done my work, work yeah. for me <laughs> in that it was present in the muzzle just here. But as, uh, in the lip then, not in the not Yeah, in the so lip definitely in the lip. In the so what I'm going to try and do is just get this in between the teeth. Yeah, okay, yeah. so if you can just do a little bit of a release. We then used um, the very technical bit of <laughs> hose to shove in his mouth so I could check his hard palate at the top of his mouth. Yeah, yeah, That's it. Well done. Okay, yeah, bite on that. Get angry on that. There we go. Well done. So now Good I can enough. just see, yep, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so hard palate's perfectly fine, Alan. Yeah. So we're all good there. Fantastic. We've got quite a bit of swelling here. You can see the disparity between the yeah. two sides. So... I guess you'd expect that, really. Absolutely. If I had a fish hook in my, uh, my face for a few days, I think that'd be pretty swollen. And the great news is that although very swollen, uh, there wasn't any other major damage beyond that. All of his teeth are healthy, there is no damage to the gums, and there's certainly no suggestion here that this seal won't make a full recovery. After a shot of antibiotics, the seal is ready to be transported to a release site near a seal colony downriver. Very beautiful. Yes, you are. But before the young seal heads off on the next leg of his journey, there's one more surprise. We've just tra traced the tag and he's come all the way from Holland. Well, that's confusing, there's no clogs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a male harbour seal called Freddie Mercury. <laughs> no. uh, Freddie Mercury was admitted as a pup in Peterborough and released last August. It's amazing. Travel around quite a lot. From Holland to Teddington. Wow. I love the fact that he's got a, a British name of a British icon and he decided to, to return to the UK. I think they went pretty well, Alan. I'm delighted, actually. Um, it takes a little bit of uh, organising and everybody came from all over the country, but as you saw, it either takes five minutes or it can take, you know, five days. So we're really pleased that it went so quickly. So the right thing to do is to take him down to the estuary now. We'll take him down to Sheppey and we'll release him in the Thames estuary and he's then got a choice. There's a colony there. So you can either join the colony or you can go back to Holland. So we're really pleased. Been a very good day. The sun's shining. Uh, we've got a lot of happy people here who have given up their Saturday, traveled a huge way to rescue a seal. And some people might go, you know what, it's just a seal. But these creatures deserve our respect, deserve to live and be healthy. So it's just great to have been a part of rescuing him. And uh, now he's gonna go off and Enjoy a wonderful life.
Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.